I mean, he's glad he's walking through the windows of our soul this morning. Amen. It's good to be back into the house of the Lord this morning. Good to be among God's people. Good to see each one of you with us today. Amen. Trust that you've had a good week this week and that the Lord has just blessed you above and beyond measure. Amen. And again, it's just a joy to be among God's people this morning. Amen. I want to go back into the Word of God this morning with the help of the Lord. And I want to go back. And last week I preached the time is now. And uh, I'm sort of titling that part one because today I'm going back to that same passages of Scripture. I don't know that I've ever done this before. But I'm going to preach the time is now, part two. Hallelujah. The time is now, part two. Amen. So I want you to go with us. Same chapter, 2 Timothy chapter 4 as we stand for the reading of God's word reading those same scriptures amen I know in last week we were preaching several came down to the altar during the message and God just took over and it's all right if he wants to do it again today amen this altar is always open this is his house amen and we just he just letting us be here amen so we just want him to have his way today amen if you're there with me this morning, say amen. amen. The time is now. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, reading verses 1 through 8 again this morning. Amen. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Remember, I told you last week, the Lord put this in my spirit, for the time will come, but he said the time is now. When they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Paul said, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, he said. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also, that love his appearing. Let us pray together. My Lord and my Savior, I love you this morning. Lord, I am indebted unto you this morning, Lord, to preach this everlasting gospel. And I pray this Sunday morning, Lord, once again, Lord, that you will infiltrate the house of the living God, that you will infill every vessel in the house this morning Lord because I know and I realize today Lord that I can do nothing without you but Lord I am dependent upon you and I need the Holy Ghost anointing Lord that anointing Lord that breaks the yoke of bondage I pray today Lord anoint us use us today Lord Lord, I realize today, Lord, that without you, Lord, I have nothing to bring. But, Lord, with you, I can do all things. So I pray this morning, Lord, not my will today, Lord, but let thy will be done today. Let your name be glorified and let souls be added unto your kingdom this day. Break, Lord, the barrier of sin. Break the stronghold of the enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, deliver your people and set them free this Sunday morning. Lord, we need you. Hallelujah. We need you, Lord, this day, in this hour, in this moment. Father God, let your word go forth, not only within this local church, but those that hear it over the airways this coming week. God, let it be a ministry. Let it be a blessing. Let it be of help to them, we pray. And Father God, when all of this is said and done and accomplished, Lord, I'll give you all the glory, honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. 
Amen. Shake a few hands. Tell them it's good to see them this morning. Oh, God, you are wonderful this morning. When I begin to look at the Word of God, and the time is now, we talked about some things last week that I may reiterate a little bit this morning, but I want to finish this that God laid upon my heart. And You know, I begin to look at this when Paul began to charge Timothy. In 2 Timothy 2 and 1, he said, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Jesus. In other words, Timothy, I want you to trust the Lord completely. I want you to depend upon Him and His power. Don't try to live the Christian life in our own power, but I want you to depend on the Lord, Timothy. I want you to trust in Him fully and completely. How many is trusting the Lord this Sunday morning? To lead us and to guide us. And he began to tell Timothy, as I talked about last week, he said, preach the word, Timothy. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove and rebuke and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when men will not endure sound doctrine. And he goes on to tell Timothy the things that are going to take place. And I told you last week, that time is now. It's not tomorrow. It's not a year from now. It's not two years down the road. It is now. It's happening within our society. Today is the day because the time is now. Amen. That they shall turn their ears away from the truth. And shall be turned unto fables. But I want to begin this morning with verse 5. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. How many knows that we've got to go through some things? Life is not easy. Living for the Lord is, is not going to be tiptoeing through the tulips and, and one day we're just going to ascend off into glory and all's going to be well. No, that's not the case. Uh, he talked more about affliction and suffering than he did a lot of other things in the Bible. He talked more about hell than he did heaven because the Lord knew that his people would have to endure some things in this world. So if you've got the mindset today that preacher, I'm just going to live for the Lord and, and nothing bad that's never going to happen. Cancer's never going to take out one of my loved ones. I'm never going to have to suffer. I'm never going to have to have be put in the hospital and have an operation. You are fooled this morning because the children of God, we've got to endure some things. He said to Timothy, listen, you've got to endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Trust the Lord, Timothy. Stand on the word of God because there's going to come times when people will rise up against you. How many know there's times that family members will rise up against you? Co-workers will rise up against you. Sometimes there's division in our very own home when our loved ones rise up against us. Why? Because the time is now. It's not tomorrow. It's not next week. The time is upon us now. When we see in all these things begin to happen. And he also told him there in chapter 3 as I read to you last week. That in the last days perilous times would come. When men would be lovers of their own selves, covetous and boasters. And I read all this to you last week. They would be traitors in verse 4, heady, high mind. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. 
What is Paul telling Timothy? He said, Timothy, the time is now. It is upon us when these things are going to happen. But you've got to be faithful. I come by to tell the church of God of prophecy that even though it's happening now in our hearts and in our lives and in our families, it doesn't change the power of God. It doesn't change the ability of God. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the Lord God, my Redeemer. And there's nothing too hard for the Lord. I said, Timothy, trust in the Lord. Stand on the power of his word. Trust in the grace of God because his grace is sufficient to see us through whatever you and I got to endure, my brothers and my sisters. God's grace is sufficient. The time is now. But even though the time is now, it's time to take a stand on the word of God and say, Lord, no matter what happens, I'm going to stand and I'm going to be faithful unto you, Lord. Talk to us this Sunday morning when Paul was writing to Timothy. He talked about being loyal. Uh, study when he was writing his writings. In Judges chapter 2, go with me there this morning. I was going to have it on the screen, but we don't have it this morning. In Judges chapter 2, verses 17 through 19. I want to show you some things this morning, children of God. And even though the time is now, we've got to go through some things. You've got to stay loyal. Amen. In Judges 2, 17 through 19, the Bible tells us, And yet they would not hearken unto their judges, but they went a whoring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord. But they did not so. And when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. Listen now. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings. By reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. And it came to pass, listen now, when the judge was dead, that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers. In following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them, they ceased not from their own doings nor from their stubborn ways. It's easy. I'm talking about being loyal, being consistent. I wrote a thought down. It is easy to be loyal as long as we are around people that are devoted to God. Amen. I said it's easy to be loyal as long as you're around men and women, Christian brothers and sisters that are devoted to God. But my question to you this morning is what about when you're alone? What about when you're by yourself? When nobody knows where you're at? Are you still loyal to God? When you're down at the beach? Are you still loyal to God? When you're up at the mountains, are you still loyal to God? When you're sitting there in the midnight hours watching things on that television set, are you still loyal to God? I come by to preach to you this morning. We got to be loyal to God. God is watching us and God has given us a charge to be faithful unto the Lord Jesus Christ and to be loyal to Him. When I married my wife, I took vows to her that I would be loyal to her. That I would be the husband that I needed to be. I would have no other women in my life. Of course, I'd probably be dead if I did. <laughs> I tell people, hey, it's hard enough to keep up with one. I don't need another one. Come on, somebody ought to help me this morning. Uh, I'm talking about being loyal to God. And he's got to be first in our lives. The Bible said in Matthew 6 and verse 24, the word of God said, and this is the words of Christ, he said, no man can serve two masters. 
For either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. When I'm talking about being loyal, he must be number one in our life. As much as I love my wife, she is not number one or my grandchildren are not number one. The Lord Jesus Christ is number one in my life and I've got to give him my all. Do I have anybody that's loyal? Do I have anybody that's committed to God? Do I have anybody that's that's faithful in the church of the living God this morning. God is looking for somebody that will be loyal, that will be committed to him, that will say, Lord, you're first. You are the head and not the tail. He is our Lord. He's our Savior, and I'm committed to him. God is looking for people, and that's what Paul is telling Timothy. you got to stay committed to the Lord. Look with me, Ephesians 1 and 1. If you don't have time to look, just write these down. The Apostle Paul writing again to the church of Ephesus. And he says in Ephesians 1 and 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus. Notice the last line. And to the what? Faithful, Faithful in Christ. Are you faithful to God this morning? Are you loyal to him at all times? Not just when you're with your Christian brothers and sisters. Not just when you're around the church crowd. Are you faithful to God when you get on Facebook? Are you exalting him? Are you lifting him up? Come on, somebody ought to help me preach this morning. Hallelujah. I want to know, are you faithful this morning? Are you committed to the Lord Jesus Christ? That's why Paul said, Timothy, my son in the faith, be committed to the Lord. Be loyal to him. I've served him, amen, all of my life. Is what Paul was saying. And now I'm passing the torch to you, Timothy, your young evangelist in the Lord. And I want you to carry this word. I want you to carry it just like I've carried it. I want you to preach the word, Timothy. Be instant in season and out of season when people don't want to hear it preach it anyhow when they don't like you preach it anyhow oh how oh glory to God I said when they don't want to hear it you ought to preach it louder shout it from the housetop shout it from the countryside shout it in the field shout it in the city shout it wherever you go the Lord is God and he is worthy to be praised do I have anybody that loves him in the Chadburn church this morning Committed to him, faithful, loyal. Secondly, he said to Timothy, be diligent, son. Huh? Be diligent. Go to Joshua 22 and 5 with me. Joshua 22 and 5. Let's see what God has to say here about being diligent. Diligent is hard working. Huh? Persevere in doing good. Joshua 22, 5. You there with me? Say amen. amen. He said, but take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you to love, listen, to love the Lord your God and to walk in all of his ways and to keep his commandments and to cleave unto him and to serve him with all. Somebody said all. All, all your heart and with what? All your soul. Be diligent, Timothy. Don't let nobody persuade you any different than that which you have seen, that which you've heard, that which you have experienced, Timothy. Don't let no. You see, we're living in a time when people want to persuade you. Huh? That brother that was talking to me the other day about wanting a companion. And he was probably wanting to say to me, and he come back with a scripture, well, don't, want, don't God want you to be happy? See how quick it is for the enemy to get in there? And I said, yes, my brother, the Lord wants you to be happy. But what you're requesting may not make you happy. Huh? Can I tell us something this morning? If God can't make us happy, 
I said if God says to Shirley can't make us happy money won't make you happy another wife won't make you happy a great big fine a million dollar home will not make you happy it's a temporary fix it will not make listen the drug addict just another shot up his veins will not make him happy it's a temporary fix but I'm telling you about one this morning that can make you happy if you stay loyal if you stay diligent if you stay committed to God God will make you happy God will raise up your family God will save your children God will restore your marriage but you got to stay loyal and diligent to the Lord people want to persuade you Brother Keith, to make you go their way or say what they want you to what they want you to hear. But I come by to tell you I'm not going to be persuaded. Neither death, nor life, nor principle, nor power, anything else comes. I won't let it persuade me. This is what Paul was telling Timothy. And I'm going to get back to there in just a minute. Just stay with me. Timothy, stay loyal to the Lord Jesus Christ. You read about my life and you, you, you know how they done me harm. Alexander the copper smith done me much harm. He said, but stay committed. Huh? Can I stop and interject a thought right here? Husbands and wives, you may not be everything the other one thinks you ought to be, but stay committed. That's weak. That's why the divorce rate is higher in the church than it is in society. Yes, it is. The divorce rate in the church is about 53%. Huh? Versus 51% in the world. That's a sad day, my friend. Sad day. Because the time is now. When there's men in pulpits telling the congregation you can do anything you want. God understands. God loves you. Listen, my friend. If you're not living by this word of God, you're going to die and go to hell. I said if you're not living by this book and following the commandment of the Lord and cleaving unto him and him only, you will die and go to a devil's hell. I know this is hard, but it's the word of truth. And we need preachers with a backbone that will stand up again in our pulpits and declare what the saith the word of the Lord. For the time is now when men are being bought out. For the dollar bill, preachers are surrendering. Talked to one just yesterday. I said, brother, I heard you lost your pastor. He said, yeah, we did, preacher. I said, do you have another one yet? He said, no. This is a big church that you would know if I'd call the name of it. It has a lot of stuff going on all the time. He said, there's two that have been preaching for us, and the committee is going to vote on them. He said, but there's one there that I sort of hope we get. What's all this got to do with the message today, preacher? Have, have we come to a time? You know, I read in our Sunday school lesson this morning when they wanted a king, and I read down the bottom, brother didn't read it, but he said, in most cases, the majority rules. It's in your Sunday school lesson. In most cases, the majority rules, even in the church. Come on, stay with me. But if you read in your Sunday school lessons that other line that came after that, the majority is not always. Woo! Glory, glory, preach, Brother John. The majority is not always right. Just because you got a lot on this side over here doesn't mean that they're always right. Listen, because I'm going to tell you, the devil will defile you, the devil will corrupt you, and the devil will bring a man in and put him behind a pulpit, put a Bible under his arm, put a suit on his back, and he'll destroy the church of the living God. Everything that talks a Bible has not been anointed of God. Everything that says they're a preacher has it's not been anointed by God. The anointing makes the difference. I come by to tell you, Paul said, whatever you do, Timothy, stay committed to God. Follow his words. Stay with his teachings and stay faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. Good preaching, Brother John. Hey, man. Stay committed to God. Stay loyal. Stay diligent. And thirdly, 
endure some stuff. Matthew 10 and 22. Go with me there just a moment. Matthew 10 and 22. I won't be before you much longer. Matthew 10, 22. Listen. When you go against the grain, sometimes people will hate you. Because you don't go along with the crowd. They will dislike you. What are you preaching, preacher? The time is now. Come on, somebody ought to say amen. Huh? In Matthew 10 and 22, he's talking about enduring. Amen. Endurance is a type of evidence of our salvation. And you shall be hated. Hated. That's a strong terminology. Of all men. For who? For my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end, same, shall be saved. Huh? Now you know where I'm at. That's why Paul told Timothy, endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Huh? For the time is now. Can I tell you something, Christian men and women this morning? Don't be persuaded from this truth. Huh? They're making a lot of other Bibles today and a lot of other languages. But be careful. Amen. Be not deceived, for God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. What are you telling me, Brother John? The devil is out there this morning. Paul said, even now are there many antichrists in our world. And they're out to deceive you. They're out to destroy you. The enemy has come to seek. He's come to kill. He's come to destroy everything that he can destroy this morning. But I'm come by to tell you, if you'll stay loyal to God, if you'll stay diligent, in the work. Don't let your minds roam here and there. Keep your hands busy. Keep your hands to the plow. And don't ah, and don't look back. Amen. Listen, you're fit for the kingdom of God. I come by to tell you today, if you'll stay diligent to God, if you'll stay committed to the Lord and you stay faithful, God is going to bless you and your household. And God is going to take care of you and supply all of your needs if you're committed to Him. Is anybody committed in the church today? Are you committed? Got to make it to the end, folks. Amen. In Matthew 24 and 3, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Huh? Listen, children of God, he never promised us, as the old country song said, a rose garden. But he promised us some valleys. He promised us some thorns in that valley. Huh? He promised us some hardships. He promised us that things would happen in our lives that we feel like ought not happen because we're committed to God. Listen, just because we're committed to God does, listen to me, does not exempt us. Amen. I know we're in this world, but we're not of this world. But preacher, it does not exempt us from the things that are in this world. Do you hear me this morning? We're going to be tried. We're going to be tested. We're going to walk through the valleys of the shadows of death. But he said, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, Lord. Huh? We got the mentality today that everything's going to go well. All's going to be good, but that ain't what Paul told Timothy. Huh? Go back and read about the Apostle Paul. He was beating everything else in jail, law, and everything else. Huh? And it may come in our society. We were talking just last night and a couple of us and somebody made the statement, if, if the Lord don't come back in 10 years, I'll be surprised. I said, me too. Because Brother Hunt, the things that I see taking place in our society tells me the time is now. Huh? You can't even walk the streets anymore. Can't even turn on the television set hardly anymore. Two mamas and two daddies. Two women walking uptown, holding hands and hands, kissing. <coughs> Men, same thing. Preach on, brother. Preach on. I told you last week, truth has fallen in the streets. 
And filthiness has taken over our society. Filthiness. And I can name a lot of stuff this morning that I don't have time, but filthiness has taken over our society. Huh? Why, preacher? Because the time is now. Huh? It's now that Paul, in his writings to Timothy, said these things were going to happen. We don't have to wait till tomorrow. It's happening now among us. It's happening in our society. Huh? We've got more people on welfare today than it's ever been on welfare. We've got more nursing homes now than we've ever had in, in history. Why? Because people are sicker now than they've ever been. They're going up on every corner. I told them the other day, in Columbus County, if you want a job, become a CNA. Or a nurse. Huh? Yeah, or a prison guard, yeah. Huh? You're guaranteed a job just about it. Huh? We don't need farmers anymore. Amen. We hardly need laborers anymore. They got machines to do all that stuff anymore. It's sad, folks, but the time is now. And I come by to declare unto you this morning, and not because I'm a preacher of doom and gloom, I, I believe this book, I believe what the Lord said, but I also believe the time is now. Amen. And it's not going to get any better. Amen. Hear me in this church. Hear me by airwaves this week. It is not going to get any better. So if you put your faith and trust in society, you're going to be disappointed, my friend. If you put your faith in the church, you're going to be, I said in the church, you're going to be disappointed. If you put your faith in the deacon board, you're going to be disappointed. If you put it in the president of the United States, you're going to be disappointed. But if you put your faith in the Lord, you shall not be disappointed because he is the way, mama. He is the truth and the life. He is the great I am. Does anybody know him today? He's my baker. He's my lawyer. He's my provider. He's my caretaker. He prescribes all my medicines. He heals all my diseases. It is the Lord, my God, and my Redeemer. That's who he is this morning. The time is now, my friend. It's time. And we take a stand as children of God. Be loyal to the Lord Jesus Christ. Be diligent in our work. And endure the hardships that come our way. Don't be like the people of Israel and judge it. And moan and groan. Because things happen. In our life. This word tells us. That it's going to happen. But I like what Paul said. If I could get back. Paul said, for I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. The time's now. I'm going to leave you, Timothy. But I'm passing the torch on to you. Be diligent. Be faithful. Be faithful in the work of the Lord. I talked about divorces a moment ago. If we'd be more faithful and committed to each other, there'd be less divorces in the United States of America. Amen. You know, when I married my wife, I didn't look like I look now. Brother talked about being handsome this morning. I don't know about all that business. But Brother Larry, you know, I had a head full of hair at one time. Yeah. And it was brown. Can you imagine that? Shh. You liked that sister Ann, didn't you? Hey, Amen. Huh? There was a time my hair wasn't gray and white, Brother Terry. Can you imagine that? It's hard to believe, ain't it? I believe I've been that way since I've been here. All 19 years. Amen. No. And things have happened in our marriage. Just stay with me. I'm just using me and my wife for a moment. And things have happened... We've had our arguments. We've had our times of hardship. Yes, we have. I know that's hard to believe too, but we do. But you know, I'm still committed to her. Amen. I'm still faithful to her. Amen. Huh? Does she look like she did when I married her? No. Just about 105 pounds soaking wet. Y'all would never believe she used to take weight on to try to gain weight, about 98 pounds. 
I fed her good since then, though. Praise the Lord. <laughs> she don't need weight on anymore. We're trying to get weight off. Amen. But I'm still committed to her. And if the Lord spares us, Brother Larry, next year, I'm going to give her something she's always wanted all of her life, a wedding. Yeah, I'm going to give her her wedding. After 34 years, she's always begged me and pleaded, can I please have a marriage, a wedding? I said, honey, I've married you for $35. Still faithful. Went down to Dillon, married her, and had to borrow my brother-in-law's wedding ring, put on her finger. Amen, I did. Still committed after all of these years, and next year I'm going to give her the wedding of her life. She's already got her wedding gown. It's sitting right over in that parsonage. Oh, yeah, I'm already on the move here. Hallelujah. I'm going to put a diamond on that finger and everything. Come on. Somebody ought to help me this morning. What are you trying to tell me, Brother John? I'm trying to tell you she might not look like she does. 20 or 30 years ago when I married her, I don't look the same, but the bottom line is I'm still committed to her. I'm still loyal to her. I'm still faithful to her. And if God allows me to live another 20 years, I want to be faithful in serving the Lord and commit Anybody committed to God I want you to stand at your feet in the church And I want you to give God a hand of praise And say Lord I'm going to stay committed to you Lord Jesus I'm going to stay committed to you Lord Because you're the best thing Lord That's ever happened to me Glory, glory, glory. Oh, said my time is at hand. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I have kept the faith. Can you, if, if, the, if the grave catches you before the rapture takes, can somebody stand over you and preach your funeral like that? And they look at Brother Hunt and say, Brother, that man was faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. What a testimony. What a testimony. For somebody to look at you and say, you know what? For the last number of years that I can remember, that individual has been faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. But what a calling. What a blessing. What a testimony. Huh? You know, if I'm around Tabor City and, and, and people hear about me pastoring and all this stuff and and, and, you know, if I'm around Tabor City, the first name I mention is this fellow him. You say, why is that? Because there ain't too many in Tabor City don't know him. And I say, yeah, I pastor so-and-so. Do you know uh, uh, Pastor Roger Small? Y yeah, that is a good man. Then I, I said, you know what? He goes to our church. <laughs> If he's a bad man, well, we dismissed him last week. I pray God. <laughs> no. Yeah, he was a member one time. You know, and they say, that's a good man, and he loves the Lord. And said, you know, he preaches hard, though. I said, yeah, he does, but he preaches the word to us. I was somewhere not long ago, and they said, when Brother Roger preaches again, preach, I know I go to another church, but when he preaches, will you let me know? I want to go hear him again. I said, I sure will. What a testimony that is. Amen. What a testimony that is. And I could use other people in here this morning. But I come by to tell you, Paul said, listen, I'm getting ready to leave here. And I know what I've done for the Lord. I've fought, I've given everything that I've had for the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, he said, in the end, there's going to be a reward waiting for me. If you stay loyal to the Lord, if you stay diligent, and if you go through the times that are coming upon us, and you stay faithful, you can say the same thing that Paul said 
Henceforth there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. And not for me only, but for all of them. You know, Brother Roger, I thought about this week. Heaven. And I thought about in my little finite mind. I tried to think about how wonderful it's going to be. And all the people that's going to be up there. And I thought, man, what a time. What a time. What a time. <laughs> Good God, I feel it in my spirit. Brother Jody, you're talking about shouting? You're talking about rejoicing? You're talking about running up and down the streets of glory? Dancing around the crystal sea? You're talking about shouting with the apostles of old. This same man that I'm preaching to you about, the apostle Paul. One day I want to walk up to him and shake his hand and say, Paul, you inspired me. Paul, you helped me through the years. As you helped Timothy, you have blessed me. And I just want to shake your hand. And we'll probably shout a little bit there. Is anybody happy this morning? Is anybody ready to go to heaven? Are you loyal to the Lord? Preach for the John. Are you committed to God? Are you faithful to him? Are you looking for him? They that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Are you ready this Sunday morning? Are you ready? I'm looking for him. I'm expecting him any moment. Huh? I went out with some friends the other week. Another pastor and his wife, we all went out to eat. And he told me to be here at a certain time, and so I got in the car, cranked it up, backed it up here, waiting on them. They were late. But I sat there, and I kept waiting and waiting. After a while, the phone rung. He said, Preacher, I'm coming through Chad. We'll be there in a few minutes. I said, Okay, brother. It's fine. What's that got to do with the message, Preacher? The one that I'm waiting on will never be late. Somebody ought to shout hey, 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 hey. I said, hey, hey, hey. He said, amen. I said, it's him. Good God Almighty, preach Brother John. He said, amen. And hallelujah. Does anybody love him in the church? Is anybody ready? Shout glory this morning. Shout praise the Lord and love him this morning. Well, 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 well. I feel the preacher a little bit right now. Great God for more. I love him this morning. He's my Lord. He's my Savior. He's my Redeemer. He's my way maker. He's my companion. He's the Lord of glory. Good God Almighty, preach boy. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy One of Israel. He is with me. His rod and his staff. Oh, good God, brother, I feel him this morning. Does anybody feel him in the house? Give him a hand to praise. Let him know that you love him. He is the great I am. And he is with us this morning. He's with us. He's here this morning. The time is now. Listen, I'm just going to be honest with you this morning. If you've been playing games, it's time to stop it. You've been playing church, it's time to stop it. Because one day you may wake up and lift your eyes in hell. Mom, I feel what I'm preaching this morning. I feel my old. Woo! Preach, go ahead, stand up and praise him, Mama. Stand, come on, Mama, 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 Mama. Praise him, Mama. It's all right. Huh? I feel my Robeson County roots this morning. Oh, hallelujah. 
Brother Lance, I know what I'm feeling this morning. And what I'm feeling is real. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. I come by to tell you this morning. God is love. And he's here this morning. He's here to meet your need. He's here to see you through. But you gotta be faithful. You gotta be committed. You gotta be loyal. You gotta be diligent in the work that God has called you to do. It's not a time to back up. It's not a time to slow down. It's a time to go forward and press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of Jesus. Is anybody ready? Let's pray. I said you're ready to press. Are you ready to press your way through to see the Lord Jesus Christ? Woo! What are you telling me, Brother John? I'm telling us this morning. I'm waiting. I'm waiting on my Savior. You know, Paul said, listen, Timothy. There'll be times, and it's in the scripture. He said, in my first answer, no man stood with me. All men forsook me. Janez and Jambres all withstood me. Alexander the coppersmith didn't mean much harm. But he said, it's okay. It's all right. Demas have forsaken me loving this present world. Titus has gone into Galatia. Uh, I could go on and on. Good God, boy, feels good this morning. Uh, what are you telling me, Brother John? It's time to be faithful, folks. It's time to get committed. Huh? I said it's time to get committed this morning. It's time to lay aside every weight and every sin that does so easily beset us and let us run with patience. The race that is set before us uh, Looking unto Jesus uh, The author and the finisher of our faith uh, Who for the joy that was set before him uh, Endured the cross uh, Despising the shame uh, And is set down in the right hand of the Father And what is he doing? He's making intercession For the children of the living God Brother Davis What are you telling me preacher? Huh? I'm going to make it huh? I don't have any other choice, Brother Hunt, but to make it. Huh? I don't have another choice. Because huh? I got to make it this morning. Because the time is now. Huh? I said, Church, you don't have a choice, child of God, this morning. You're either with Him or you're against Him. You're either in or you're out. You're either going up or you're going down. Heaven will be your home or hell will be your home. And I'm just making it plain and simple to us this morning because the time is now. I'm not up here like Creflo Dollar and begging you for $65 million to buy a jet offline. $65 million so he can get him a jet. I don't make the millions like Paula White. Come on, somebody. You have to help me this morning. Huh? This may be some of your favorite pre If it is, that's okay. Huh? I don't live in a million-dollar home. I live in a barred home. Amen. It's, it's a parsonage. Huh? It's borrowed. I'm only here for a season. Amen. Come on, somebody have to help me this morning. Hallelujah. What are you telling me, Brother John? I'm telling us the time is now, folks. Amen. we got to get committed to God. It's not about these worldly things and worldly allurements and attraction. I could care less about that kind of business anymore. Less, yeah, you may say, preacher, but you're old and gray and in the way. And maybe I am this morning. But in this grayness, there's a lot of wisdom and a lot of knowledge and a lot of understanding that the Lord has given me through the years. And I've come to realize... Oh, preach brother John I've come through the years to realize hey sister Davis it's not important but for me to please the Lord is what is important for me to stay committed to God is what is important for me to stay loyal to God is what is important do I have anybody that has those same characteristics in the church of the living God this morning is there anybody here that has those same characteristics A lot of 
folks out there today that'll fool you. Huh? There's a lot of folks I said out there today that will fool you. Huh? And they'll tell you they're Christians. They'll tell you they're preachers. But their fruit is not there. Do you hear me, church? I I'm trying to be nice this morning. Huh? Their fruit is not there. The anointing is not there. It's easy to look good in here on Sunday mornings. Hair all fixed and clothes all nice. Pressed. Had a good bath. It's nice. But what about Tuesday of next week? Huh? It's just a quarter after 12. I ain't through yet. What about Tuesday when you're not around church folk? When, when you got back with your little gang? Y'all ain't going to help me this morning. Huh? Brother Hunt, when they're back with their little in crowd, you know, and, and the lies are flying, and the filthy jokes are being told. Huh? And we sat there and we laugh with them and we joke with them, amen. And then come Wednesday night, we back in here for Bible study and we look so good, got our Bible under our arm. Huh? I'm talking about the time is now. It's not going to happen tomorrow, next week. It's right now. We got, come on, can I just be honest with you? We got hypocrites in the church. We got people talking Bibles and wearing suits that's never been called of God. They're a hireling. They're out for the dollar bill. They're out for an applaud. They're out to build a big church. They're out for the namesake. But they're not for God. I said they're not for God. They've been called by man and ordained by man. A lot of them out there trying to solicit members and everything. Because huh? they want the name. They want their church to be bigger than everybody else's. Listen, we're living in a time now. I saw something yesterday. I think it was on email or something. And it was actually 2 Timothy chapter 4. And I thought, ain't that amazing? And they had somebody on their lips there, and their lips was painted up and had sugar all across them stuck to it. What are you talking about, preacher? In 2 Timothy chapter 4, he's talking about sugar coating the word. I thought, boy, that's pretty neat. If I had a screen, I'd probably put it up there for you today. That sugar stuck all to their lips. There's a lot of people with sweet mouths today. Thank you, Sister Shirley. I'm glad you're with me, girl. I said, there's a lot of folks with sweet mouths. Huh? Oh, if you listen, they're great orators. And if you listen to them, they'll fool you. <laughs> Preach, Brother John. Huh? Why are you preaching like this, Brother Because the time is now when too many people are being fooled by Satan's devices. I told one this week, the same gentleman that was asking me about a companion. We were talking for a while there, and he began to talk to me some more, and I began to share some scripture with him. And I told him, I said, listen, son, everything that looks good isn't good. Huh? I said, everything that looks good isn't good. Huh? What are you telling me, Brother John? I'm telling us this morning, we've got to be careful, folks. Because the time is now. People are knocking on people's doors and deceiving them. Listen, I'm just going to be honest and call names this morning. Can I do that? If somebody comes to you and wants to give you a watchtower paper, don't take that trash. Come on, I know you're hearing me over the airway. Don't take that trash. Yeah, I may get some emails back and some responses, but I come to declare unto you this morning that's garbage, it's damnable, it's heresy, it's a doctrine of the devil, and it's sending men and women to hell. I come out to tell you there's only one way, and it's Jesus. I said, do you hear me this morning? There's only one way, and it's Jesus, the Son of God, the great I am. It's Jesus and Jesus only. 
Somebody praise him. Somebody. Somebody praise him. It's Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. Just feed my spirit. He said, there are many shall come in my name. Saying, lo, he's here. Lo, he's there. He said, believe it not. What are you telling me, preacher? The time is now. The time is now, folks. I don't want to be critical this morning. But be careful who you listen to on the television sets. Amen. Be careful what you listen to on WSTS. 89.5. Be careful. Because everything that comes across those airwaves has not been sanctioned by God. Hello? Are you with me? It's not been sanctioned by God. Everything again, and I'm going to keep repeating, everything that cares about and wears a suit has not been called or ordained by God. Huh? I talked to one not long ago. He said, you know what? I'm going to go to school and be me a preacher. I said, go for it. Because you're going to find out it ain't what it's cracked up to be. And if you ain't been called to God, you won't stay no how. Huh? Thank you, Lord. Gosh. Boy, this is good to my spirit this morning. Listen. The sons of Seba thought they could do the same thing Paul could do. Huh? That's what I shared with this young man this week. Huh? He's been wanting to come here and sing and preach. I said, yep. I had another one ask me not long ago. He said, we want, we want to come and preach at your church. I said, first of all, it's not my church. I said, it's God's church. I said, and secondly, when God tells me to call you, I don't care how great your influence is in Columbus County. Amen, huh? Yeah. Amen. My wife was there to bear witness. I said, I don't care how great your theology is and how this and how that is and how profound this. Does it bother me? If God tells me to call you, then I'll call you. What are you telling me, Brother John? We've got to be careful. I'm responsible for the people that walk up here behind this pulpit. Did you hear me? Because Brother Small, you know as a pastor for many years, they can do more damage and hurt in 30 minutes than you can do in five years. Huh? They'll tear up everything you've ever built. That's why I'm careful about evangelists. Even in the church of God, across there's a lot of them I won't call. Because I know how they live. Huh? You mean that's some of your own people? Oh, yeah, yeah. Jesus said that, you know, there's 12 of you that walk with me, but one of you are a traitor. Uh-huh. Who is it? He said, it's the one that dipped this hand with me in the tray. What are you telling me, preacher? There's a lot of folks today. I'm just going to be honest with you. They want to see this church fall. They want to see this preacher fall. They want to see us go down. But I've got news for you. Glory, glory, glory. We're not going down. I'm going up and I'm going over. Is anybody in the boat with me? This Glory. I said I'm going up and I'm going over and I'm going to spend eternity in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm ready for it this morning. I won't sugarcoat this word. I won't back down from the truth. It is only one way and he is the way. Back down from this book. The suit people's fancy. To make friends with them. Because to be a friend of this world is to be an enemy of the Lord. Jesus called us. He called us to be different, folks. 
Do you hear me this morning? Huh? He called us to be. He said, matter of fact, he said, we are a peculiar people. A chosen generation. Huh? Peculiar. Chosen. A people that's been called out of darkness. And we're walking in the light. For Jesus said, I am the light. <laughs> Jesus said, I am the light. And ye are the light of the world. A city set on a hill that cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. Amen. But they put it on a candlestick. And lift it high for the world to see. As I close this morning, I, I'm not finished, but I'm going to close. Listen, I'm not ashamed of this book. Amen. I'm not ashamed of who I am. Huh? I'm not ashamed of who I am this morning. I'm just an old country boy that God called out of Robinson County. With 11th grade education. Oh, I went on back to make it up years later, but... And then he called me and put me in a pulpit. And Brother Lance, he put his anointing on me. And he said, go preach, boy. And everywhere they opened the door for me, I preached. Most of the times it was in a nursing home or in the Baptist Association, but I preached. I preached. Every time they gave me an opportunity, I'd go preach. Because I wanted to do what God has called me to do. Ministers, preachers, the call of God is without repentance. You can't outrun it. You can't get away from it. You, you, you can't cover it up. It's there. It's there. What are you telling me, preacher? Sister Davis, come on for me this morning. Sister, if you would, please. And then we'll close. The time is now, folks. And I know this message may be a little bit hard for some this morning, but I'm telling you the time is now. Do not be deceived. I, I'm giving you a warning last week and, and I'm reiterating on part two this week. I'm giving you a warning. Please don't be deceived. Please. Don't let some slick talker come along and deceive you. Can, can I go a little bit further with that one? Young ladies, young men, married couples, don't let some slick talking dude come by and destroy your marriage. It ain't worth it. Because if he'll do it to you, they'll do it to somebody else later on. Huh? Oh, it'll never happen to me. You believe that life you want to. I tell my wife all the time, there's a, there's a lot of beautiful women out there in this world. Beautiful women. And she'll let me know there's a lot of good-looking men out there in, that world, in this world. She's always like men with a head full of hair. You know? So I have to be careful. That somebody don't come along with a head full of hair and sweep her off the feet. Huh? What are you telling me, Pastor? That's why I still tell her I love her. That's why every once in a while I'll slip up town and buy her a little something to wear. Sometime I'll buy a little lingerie. I ain't ashamed of it. Sometimes I tell her to get dressed up. We're going out on a date tonight. Slick head and all. So, what's all this got to do with the message? Hold on, I'm going to tell you. Because I want her to stay committed to me and I want to stay committed to her. And on the spiritual side of that, I want to do all I can for the Lord. Brother Jody, because he's soon coming back. And I want to be found loyal to him. I want to be found diligent. I want to be found enduring the things that come to my way. I want to be found faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because I don't know about you this morning, but the bottom line is this, and it ain't because Stone Cold said it. The bottom line is this, because Jesus said it. I want to hear him say, well done. 
is there anybody here this morning that you want to hear him say, well done? Come on and enter into the joy of the Lord. Shana my little boss. And live forever and forever with me. Do you want that this morning with every head bowed, every eye closed? Saints of God, just softly pray. I wonder if there's one here this morning. You want to hear him say that, but you're not where you need to be this morning. Would you please raise your hand and just put it down? God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless these. Hands are going up all in the building. Because wouldn't it be sad? Wouldn't it be sad? Hear what you've heard today and through the years. And still stand before the judge of all the earth. And he said, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. For I never knew you. And the demons of hell will come and clutch you. And carry you to a burning hell where you will spend eternity. Your choice this morning. The time is now. Don't you wait till tomorrow. Well, I'll do it later, preacher. That's a lie from hell. Because later will never come. Later will never come. What about it this morning? Those of you that raised your hand, if you'd like to come down here and let me pray with you and pray for you, I'll be glad to do that this morning. Is there one? Is there one? Don't wait on nobody else. Don't worry about nobody else beside of you. This is your time. This is your time. This is your time. This is your time. Don't worry about what nobody else is going to say about you. It doesn't really matter. It's your time. Is there another that would come? Is there another? Pray, saints. Is there another? Is there another? 